Hello guys, welcome to another banter village with me. Uh, I'm happy you're here. Uh, so just as usual, let me know in chat uh, if you can hear me and there are no problems with the picture and we will start. So just as usual, I'm going to uh, start the show with uh, three games against people I've never ever played before. And then we will just get back to the normal order of challenges. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we have here in the sense of uh, challenges? Um, yeah, we have several already. And um, yeah, let's search for someone I've never ever played before. So Roth 2021, no games so far. So I will accept this challenge. And I'm playing with uh, black pieces here. So, what do we have here? Rui Lopez, very nice. The main line or the exchanged variation? That's the question. Okay, so White is going to play the main line, I believe. No, Bishop to B3 immediately here. What is this? I've never seen this before, to be honest. Can I just take on E4? And I'm wondering, I mean, why not? Let's do it. Maybe I'm missing something, maybe it's just fine. So I grabbed the pawn. Now I support the knight with this D5. Yeah, after D3, obviously I'm uh, losing the pawn now, but after knight to C5, feels like I'm just grabbing the bishop, right? So, I mean, knight e5, knight e5, queen e5, then bishop b6, protecting the king and the pawn simultaneously. And then I will just grab the bishop. I will have a pair of bishops. Very nice. Folks say is here. Wow. Thanks a lot for joining the stream. It's been a long time. Albing as well. Cool. So, that is exactly what I was talking about. Uh... Bishop e6, yeah, it looks a bit passive for now, but it's just a question of several moves to improve it, I believe. So now, what to do now? Just to play something like queen d6, I guess. Clarifying the things with this queen on e5. It either captures my queen, which is fine, we just develop our bishop, or it goes away somewhere, or this bishop f4 is probably the best move here. Okay, but anyway, I can just take it and castle, protecting c7. So I'm getting my pair of bishops, something that I really like. The question is, is it enough for clear advantage for black? I don't think so. Position is not so simple. The question is how to solve the problem of the bishop f8. Um, yeah, probably we can t try some like f6. And another question is to take that bishop on b3 right away or just wait a bit. Also not sure what is the best way to address it. Okay, maybe bishop e7 is possible. Bishop takes g7, let's say I play rook g8. Bishop goes away somewhere, and I have some play against g2. Also a possible plan. Okay, let's just play something, because it's bleeds after all, right? We should play a bit faster. Bishop goes to g3. Okay. Uh, let's try this one. Just trying to check if the bishop is really comfortable there. Maybe not the case. And since the situation in the center is pretty much stable, I think it makes sense to grab some space on the, on the flank, on the side. 
So now what, just g5 or h4 and then g5. Uh, let's start with the g5. We'll see later what to do. Rook there, okay. And now what? I guess f5 is a better square than f7, but who knows? I mean, in both cases, I don't have serious perspectives for the bishop, at least right now. So maybe having the bishop on this diagonal will help my attack on the king side. So probably bishop f5 is a bit more logical, but d5 is handy. So maybe I should start with this move, attacking the rook, and then play bishop f5. Now d5 is not handing, obviously. It's protected by the rook. Okay. So position is defined now. As I said before, pair of bishops. And this knight on c3 doesn't look very inspiring, to be honest. Doesn't have perspectives. At least on this position, it's quite passive. Rook a4. Maybe preparing something like b4. I don't know. Let's just continue with grabbing space. And now it's a good question what to do. Rook g8 comes to mind. Just a logical follow-up. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see how that works. So rook from a4 controls g4, which means um, I cannot play g4 right away. So... Bishop b4 was suggested by Fuxia. Uh, well, I'm not sure at which moment, because I think right after taking on b3 and then moving my bishop away from e6, it was hanging there. Uh, white played rook a4, controlling b4 square, so I cannot put my bishop there. Maybe you mean something else, I don't know. But before that, my knight was on c5, so... Was not possible, I mean. All right, knight to d1, trying to bring it to e3. Maybe now it makes sense for me just to play d4, right? Ah, d4 looks great. Look at that knight on d1, it's quite bad. But why can easily solve it by playing f3, actually, and then knight f2, knight e4? I underestimated that thing. Rook c4, well, also move. But not that dangerous. I just play c6 and there is no bishop c7, rook c7 whatsoever. And this rook on c4 may become a target. So what I need is to actually have this pawn c6 protected and then b5 may trap the rook. The problem is I cannot really protect it that easily. But I can try something like this. Bishop d7. If rook d4 then bishop c5. And I can also, okay. So another idea was uh, for me to play c5 with the pawn, controlling a4 square and then bring the bishop to b5. So I think after bishop d7, rook to a4 should have been played. Otherwise, I'm just getting an absolutely winning position. The only concern here is uh, the situation on the clock, but I think it's okay. So we have like... Almost one minute. Yeah, should be enough for this position. Simply extra exchange. I don't see counterplay for white. So there is no compensation, I suppose. Let's just simplify the stuff here and create a passer. And create a passer. Centralizing the keen. Grabbing the g2 pawn. And the king is, by the way, badly placed now, I think. Ah, doesn't really matter. Yeah, we can even sacrifice the rook for a pawn. It will not change anything because black has three connected passers now. Yeah, 
they're easily running towards promotion squares and it's just over okay so um what to say um more or less balanced game but uh well right from the start i don't think bishop b3 is a good move um because after knight takes e4 probably should have tried something like d4 undermining my pawn but again I, I'm, I'm not sure it, it's dangerous i can simply take here after queen e2 i can play something like that so <coughs> i i'm not sure what white is doing here so what kind of sacrifice is that I don't see uh, compensation if white plays the gambit here. So queen two is the way to <clears throat> win the pawn back. But again, after simple knight to c5, black has no problems at very least. All right. Um, so black is just grabbing the bishop at some point and uh, enjoys a very simple position with pair of bishops, just controlling more space. Okay. Question, do you play only uh, premium members? Yes. The answer is yes. That's the rule. All right, so let's find somebody else I've never ever played before. Not a single game, I mean. Yeah, there is my next opponent three minutes, though. Zo, I said. Oh, come on. Though, I wanted to say. Sorry for that. Um, so I have to play really fast, okay? Let me win, says that he's sitting in the dark while uh, watching my show. So what do you mean, actually? Is it the way to say you're not commenting a lot or it's really dark outside or around you? And if yes, then what's what's the reason? What's going on there? I'm really wondering. Olaf is also here. Well, wow. cool. So, taking the queen is not supposed to be a good idea here. Normally, you would play queen c2, and after bishop f5, even queen to c1, and trying to undermine my uh, pawn c4, because this line actually gives me a simple, super, actually super simple play here on a queen side for nothing. For nothing. Okay, now what? B3 is very tempting, but it's probably not the best move here. On the other hand, my pawn on B4 is hanging. I don't want to give it up that easily. I can easily regain it, though. So maybe we can play something like this. I know it's experimental, but let's try it. Why well, can take on C6 and then take on B4? But I have a feeling I can simply play e6 after that and b4 will be regained. Okay, now I think I simply play e6, protecting the pawn on b4. <coughs> so, everything I say repeats, says zeal. Okay. <coughs> I can see it really. Uh, it's strange. Maybe it's just because you're usually saying something valuable. So chess 24 was taught to <coughs> actually double uh, your messages just to emphasize the importance of what you say. I don't know. Just a hypothesis. So I have no idea why it's happening. So um, a quick note, this Bishop on h7 is very important, controlling b1. So whenever I decide to take on c3, probably I should have done this already at some point. So the b-file becomes open, but why cannot really use it? In the vast majority of cases, of course, because of that bishop controlling b1. Now my question is, can I just play b takes c3 and rook to a3? Probably it's too early. I should probably care a bit about my development here so let's just get rid of that knight really the only active piece in white's camp now i 
wanted to protect my opponent's e4 just to make sure white uh, cannot easily win it after playing e4 or something like that. And the plan is also just to take on c3 at some point and then play b4, continuing with this aggressive play with pawns on the queen side, creating a passer on the c-file, most likely. So, simple play. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Dublin messages. Nice. All right, a3 is uh, dubious. Probably playable for now. Okay, let's take here. Now I'm wondering why not bishop takes a3? Because if knight to b1, but then bishop takes b1, rook takes b1, and I have some problems with the b5 pawn. All right, so maybe it makes sense for me just to complete a development, just a castle, and then we'll see. a3 is anyway a weakness. A target, so it shouldn't be a good position for white, to be honest. Maybe white should have tried, you know, just taking on f6 at some point and playing e4, because this is too passive, and it doesn't really help, because I can take on b1 at any moment and grab an a3. I can simply increase my pressure against that pawn. Um, yeah, I can also move my knight to a4 like this. So, to increase pressure on c3, that's really pleasant position for black. Black can do whatever uh, black wants, all right? Now, let's just grab that one. We already have an extra pawn. Now we have two. Yeah, and it's lost. Now we have three, actually. And, yeah, it's lost now, for sure. All right, so Fuxa explained why it's happening. Very nice. I mean, not that I'm winning one pawn after another, but why Zeal has uh, his messages doubled. One of the hypotheses again. Yeah, interesting. So, um, quickly trying to explain what happened here. So, queen takes b6 is not considered the best move here. So, the main line goes queen to c2. Uh, bishop f5 and queen to c1, you are maybe wondering why, actually, uh, why loses so many tempi here. Well, white actually provoked this c4. This is my queen is a bit misplaced here, although it's quite active at first glance attack on b2. But it's a bit misplaced because white is going to play b3. Not the next move, but after simple preparation, like knight d2 and b3 is ready. And if black wants to keep that pawn on c4, which uh, obviously makes sense, otherwise why black uh, has played that, right? So winning some space, controlling lots of important squares and so on. So to keep that pawn on c4, black has to protect it with the b5 uh, once white plays b3. But it's not enough. So actually after that, just imagine b3, b5, white can play a4, undermining b5 then. So black should be ready to play a6. So there is a lot uh to do here for black to keep that pawn on c4 and this uh, actually justifies this maneuver queen b3 queen c2 queen c1 this is considered a main line i guess um in this uh direction when you allow black to play this aggressive c5 queen b6 so yeah you can check some games of uh top players including um a famous legend um Gatakomsky, so he's one of the main experts here with white pieces. Okay, so let's continue and let's search for one more challenger I've never ever played before. Yeah, there is Marcus de Boss. Okay, accept. And white pieces, finally. Uh, it's only the third game, on the other hand. So. I mean, it's too early to complain about the fact that I'm playing uh, more games with black pieces. So, Rui Lopez as well. And that is F6. Berlin, anti-Berlin. 
d3. I like this one. So capture on c6. So it's like uh, exchanged variation of Ruy Lopez. The same bone structure, same set of pieces, slightly different position. I'm wondering, can I just play g4 and knight take c5? Is it allowed? I guess it's fine. So let's just do it. So f2 is protected, which means after knight takes e5, something like queen d4 is not dangerous. We just take the bishop and we're, we're good. Let's take it. I mean, I don't see how black is going to punish me for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so position is a bit weakened, I know, a bit vulnerable, but pawn is a pawn, and I think we're just doing all right here with white. Should we play f4 here? Super aggressive move. Well, again, why not? I don't see a reason why not. f4, at some point, knight back to f3 and f5 may become... Um, just the end for black. Fuchs dislikes the exchange for Lopez. Hmm? Question of taste. Look how it works, though. Amazing. Just, just a great position right from the start. Another thing I didn't even check is knight takes e4. D takes c4, something like queen h4 check, and I know why, because I just play king f1. I think I'm okay there. Yeah, looks good. Now it's a bit dangerous, of course, because I spent so much time on moving everything except for my pieces. It's time to continue with the development, I think. So... Check in the chat on chess 24, um, h5, just g5, I think. Yeah, it's good enough. Now we can take the knight and play f5, right? Yeah. Rest in peace, light squared bishop or something like this, right? Yeah. The bishop is done here. I mean, I'm not trapping it, of course. It can go to h7, but what kind of square it is. Okay, this could have been a mistake. So if I play bishop e3 here, then after bishop e3, queen e3, bishop f5 is possible. In which case, though, I can grab an a7. Maybe it's a good idea for me. Can this be a good line for white overall? Ah, this can be interesting, so let's try it. Although I understand that probably the easiest way to, to handle this position is to play rook f1, protect in f5 one more time, and then bishop e3, so. But we'll see. I mean, it's too tempting not to try it, because I have a sort of a checkmate in one to start with. Another threat is just to play queen a8 and take the rook on h8. It's so probably rook d7 to d8 is a move here for black, otherwise I'm just winning on the spot. All right, now what? Queen a8 can be played at any moment, correct? Yeah, so I think we're just going to castle here. Queen g5 is possible with check, was possible with check, but it's not a big deal for white. I wanted to play king b1 and then bishop is heading and there is still a threat of queen a8 and queen takes b7. Now I think of uh, how to open the position, just d4, d5 at some point. But since black decided not to grab my pawn, I'm just going to protect it with the h4. Okay, no checkmate in this game. Let's just play positional chess. 
because we don't have so much time on the clock, unfortunately. E5 was winning on the spot. Missed that. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, what to say here? Uh, this bishop h5 is probably incorrect. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's playable, but uh, I just don't see why it should be playable. So why does having absolutely normal, uh, healthy, extra pawn here? And the bishop is quite passive, as you can see, all my pawns here around this bishop are in the light squares and they're supporting each other and I have this f4 plan. Uh, so probably uh, there was an interesting option for you. After I played f4, there was this knight takes c4. Although I understand this probably shouldn't work, but there is at least this check on h4. Um, I think forcing my king to f1, although King d1 is also possible, but then after castling long, there is bishop d2, some problems with the development. You may have some compensation. But after this move, you have some tricks like this, for example. Uh, that is what I have seen during the game. Bishop e4, if queen takes, then there is just queen f2 checkmate. I cannot do it then. Um, but what I wanted to try was this knight to d3. But again, I'm not sure if it works exactly how I expect it to work. So something like castle in lawn, queen takes there, rook takes d3 with the idea of queen f2, then queen f5 check, taking on um, c5 next move, but this looks super dangerous for white. I think something like rook to f3 may be very annoying. Other white is technically two minor pieces up. Uh, but I have no idea. Uh, so instead of playing knight to d3, probably white should try something like knight to f3, attacking the queen and attacking the bishop. This is probably the way to go. Um, and if queen g3, then I can take on e4 with check. I think that position should be winning uh, for white. And if queen goes back to e7, then I'm a minor piece up and can continue with something like this. So looks more or less fine for white, taking into account that white is a minor piece up here. But what's interesting, <coughs> because in this position did work, in a slightly different one, it may be a good option for black. Something like this, I mean, I guess this position looks terrible for me. I mean, black's position looks terrible to me. Um, but again, maybe I'm underestimating something. Yeah, something like knight e4 deserved attention again here. Let's have a look just briefly. Maybe it worked for some reason. No, I think I'm controlling d1 square, so there was no rook d1 whatsoever. Bishop takes c4. Well, there is this move, right? Bishop takes c4 first, then rook to d1, but then queen takes d1 and f2 is controlled. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. And vice versa, it would not work at all. Something like rook d1 here, just take the knight, and again, if bishop takes c4, I already control f2 so I can grab the bishop. Yeah, it looks like white is fine here. So, um, Let's continue with the normal order of challenges. So the first challenger today was uh, Flag of Catalonia, please. Here we go. Accept the challenge and playing with black pieces. God damn it. Again, black pieces. Probably in this game I will try something uh, more entertaining than just e5 against e4 or Nintz or Queen's Indian against uh, something closed. Let's see what white is going to play. Not sure. C4, D4, E4 moves with the knights or what? Catalonia. Here we go. Knight goes to F3. Okay, let's play this move. Why can play E4 and play Sicilian? No. Why decided to play C4? So now probably we're going to get something like Hedgehog. No, not really. White is playing a different thing here. 
Brazil says go flag, which may sound like go flag him. Um, okay, out of six. Nah. How to make this position a bit more interesting to play? And the requirement is to make it a bit more interesting to me only, not to my opponent. Let's try this. The question is, why did I play a6? Just to control b5, because in this case, I can take on d5 and then continue with the bishop b5 check. Not very pleasant. That's why I decided to control that square in advance. But on the other hand, it's just a waste of time if white doesn't do what I want them to do. So if white doesn't take on d5, then this a6 looks like a waste of time. But okay. So now I'm wondering, can I play d4, d4, e4, c4, knight d4, queen d4, knight d5 looks dangerous. <coughs> but maybe it's playable. But then knight goes to c7, then grabs my rook on a8, for example. Yeah, it looks not very satisfying. Okay, let's just support the idea with the knight c6 first. Intending to play d4. So when I play d4, at the same time, something like knight b4 may be also an option. I think I'm kind of obliged to play d4 because if I don't, white plays d4 and grabs the initiative. I suppose instead of queen c2, d4 deserves serious attention. The question is to capture on d4 with the knight first. Well, I think it makes sense, but after c d4, white will have some problems with space. So with the knight d4 exchanged pieces and help white solve this problem of space. So I'll just take with the pawn. So there was a suggestion from Albing, just castle and avoid the opening up right now. Um, I need only one move, I think. But you're right, so instead of playing this a6 and d5, should have castle first. So right after a6, white could have tried d4. A bit later, instead of queen c2, white could have tried d4. I think that promised white some, some uh, you know, easy to play position at least. Knight on d1, this is really bad, square. What is probably hoping to play b4, b5, so I have to deal with that one. Maybe with a simple a5 move, just preventing b4, and that's it. If queen goes to d3, attacking d4, I have e5. Yeah, I mean, I will just play a5, and that's it. I'm having a very good position. Castle only when you have no better move. Portion of wisdom from Fuxia. Good idea, by the way. So it's hard now for White to find good squares for pieces. There's no space, this knight on d1 is bad. So d4 is easily protected this way, for example. Bishop c5 was another idea, but e5 looks nice with the idea of just proceeding with the e4. Yeah, it looks, looks great. Looks great for black. Looks great. Knight g5. All right, preventing e4. 
what should I do now? There are different options. I can just castle now. I don't see a problem with that move. H7 is protected, right? Right. Oh, that's a good moment. So we have achieved everything. The rest is just to coordinate the rest of the pieces and smash white. I'm not going to simplify the things. For now, I'm just moving my net to C5. For example, here, after F5 on a knight C5, I think I'm just winning. Just winning the game. Queen is under attack. If Queen C2, then D3 wins a piece. If Queen B1, B3 drops. So, game over. The game is over. And the knight is not going to make a move. I, I believe. We'll try our best not to allow the knight to move anymore in this game. So for now, knight cannot move because the bishop is hanging. There will be more to it, I believe, a bit later. Uh, so now what? Bishop c5. Check. And then knight to d4. Bishop on b7 is a monster waiting for a good moment. The knight will make a move now, right? But in that case, knight f2 could have been very annoying for, for white. Okay, now what? Just f4. And f3, right? Yeah. Check. And checkmate. I told you the knight is not going to make a move in this game anymore. So, nothing to say here. This guy is the reason why white is suffering. But, um, of course, the main idea was that... Uh, Knight went to d1 after I played d4, right? So the best thing white could have done uh, was actually to prevent this d4 at some point. So somewhere here, d4, or after castle and bishop e7, just play d4, play a bit more aggressive chess, and you're going to be fine. Okay. Especially after black played a6, this makes sense, right? Because you're better prepared for this active play in the center. You're better developed... So I still have to find time to make castling. So you're ready to open files and create hanging pawns, for example, on d5 and c5. So I'm not saying that this is better position for white. I think it's just balanced. I think it's more or less equal, but yeah. You get, you get the point. You're not suffering here for sure. The next thing is the clasher. Wow. Haven't played for ages, all right? So, let's try it. Play with black pieces again. And let's try something not typical for me. Uh, the sniper variation, it is called, or something. What the hell, the clasher? Why are you not making your move? All right, knight of three is a, is a way to go. So now we have a transposition to accelerate a dragon or something. <laughs> Let me win again, black, is it allowed? As you can see, yeah. So, I'm not actually uh, doing anything to 
to get it, so just automatic. A randomizer, which is not quite random, I, I believe. Okay. Let's just cancel here. Oh, no. This cannot be good at all. I think Queen B6 is already quite promising for black. Just my knowledge from my childhood, of course, I, I've been playing it with white pieces. But let's have a look. Queen B6. Knight F5. I can take on B2 simply. If Knight takes C6. can't believe it. it's it's a good idea for white to play something like that but maybe knight c6 is a way to go because um, uh, if queen takes e3 without check there is knight takes e7 and uh, well black will definitely have some compensation but not more than that all right so instead let's just play d5 it's a normal move which is made after castling so black has no problems there so instead of f3 castling is playable but gives white nothing um as far as i remember maybe something has changed over years because this is my knowledge from i don't know 2001 or something or 2002 <laughs> so And I do remember how I play this with white, with bishop e2 and bishop e3, castling, and then in our town there was a uh, good international master who specialized in uh, dragon Sicilian accelerated dragon and stuff, so uh, he punished me several times for being passive against dragon. So that I started playing absolutely different things against him, so... Marozzi bind, uh, some other stuff, not even playing e4 sometimes at some point. And one of the ideas was exactly this d5 against castling. So I played castling and then he played d5 and said, like, no problems whatsoever. Against f3, it should work also in a very good way, I believe. Look at this no center for white anymore. No space problems for black anymore. And by the way, here, I don't know, but probably b takes c6 is even more interesting than taking with the queen. I'll try this move. Because if queen d5, then cd5, I have a center, I have the open b file, so my position should be very promising there. We both have bishops, but I think my bishops will have much more targets. And if c3, well, isn't it wasting so much time now? I mean, probably I cannot punish white for it right now, but should be somehow punished a bit later. Maybe in the nearest future, I don't know. Let's just attack something. So B2 is under pressure. Pay attention to how much time white lost here. So, black is better developed, black is already attacking something, while white skin is still only one. There are lots of weaknesses, vulnerabilities, so it should be unpleasant for white to play it. Okay, this is a way to go, by the way. So what about bishop f5 with the idea of bishop takes c3? Should be nice. Should be pretty much in the spirit of dragon. It's not... Protecting the pawn passively, but bring the pieces to active squares. And if g4, okay, it's another weakening. So in that case, I can just step back to e6 for some time being passive. But yeah, having targets, having more targets than before. Bishop to d3. Okay, let's grab it. And let's just play rook b5. Protecting the pawn, but at the same time preparing rook to b8 or maybe rook to a5. Depends on what white is going to do. So there is, 
a possibility to play e6, but I'm going to make that move only if white attacks the pawn the second time. Yeah. A dream position. So the question from Prom Knight, King can go to d2 after that sacrifice on c3. Yeah, but imagine white captured on d5, let's say, after bishop f5. Then bishop c3 works just fine. So it was not an immediate threat, it was just an idea. So I wanted to bring another rook to c8, for example, and just to see how that works. So now, I mean, can I play rook b8? I think I can. Maybe a5 was a bit cleaner, but this should be also fine. After bishop a7, in addition to rook b7, I have bishop h6 set check i think all right never mind we're no longer there yeah it's far from being winning for black but from a practical point of view it's a pleasant position and this gives black really good chances. All right. So let's give the bishop for, for, for some time. Now I can take on a3. That was, by the way, the idea behind my move. So takes rook b1, rook b2 checkmate. Yeah, it was a cheapo, I understand, but who cares? I wanted to keep the bishop on the board, so why not? Doing it with the temple, right? Check. I think we should take the rook. Now we can grab this pawn. And protect it from behind. And this pawn is also protected. So, super greedy approach. But I think it's fine. Controlling the d-file now. Preventing any sort of counterplay for white. And centralizing the key gradually. All right. OK. So what to say here? Um, very passive play in the opening. Uh, instead of, yeah, as Fuchs had mentioned, the main line goes bishop to c4, followed by bishop b3. Um, a bishop b2 is the possible, but not very promising. So after castling, but basically plays the same stuff and something similar arises, although it's a, a better version for white, most likely, uh, compared to what happened in the game. Because after f3, you really don't do anything in the sense of development and um, yeah, basically uh, yeah, creating new weaknesses. That's the problem. Uh, I could have captured with the queen, by the way, but we take c6. I think it's more in the spirit of this position because I open the b file, I immediately create a target. So, yeah, that's the thing. Okay, let's continue. The next was chess cut it. Three minute game. Oh my god. Three minute game. I have to play faster. Oh, nice. Yanish Contra Gambit. Ooh. Okay, I have no idea how to play here. Uh, probably I should have captured on C6 first. I always forget what to do here. I don't know why. Let's just castle. Um, knight to d4 followed by knight to f5 looks very tempting, but I'm not sure it is correct. So knight d4, c5, knight goes to f5, c4, kind of trapping my bishop. Knight takes g7, attacking the rook, c takes d3. I don't have so much time in calculating this stuff. 
So probably instead, I will just play this simple move. And just exchange pieces here. This should be correct way for white to play it. So position is simplified now and white has better pawn structure. This uh, bishop on g7 is quite poor, especially if I put my knight on f5. Probably I should have done this one move ago. But even this way looks nice. Knight to f5. And just keeping queens for now. Because I think there may be some tactical tricks based on that. Now what to do? How to develop my bishop uh, to e3? There's something like knight c4 potentially. Not very pleasant. So let's put it on f4 first. Yeah, let's bring it to f4. Queen goes to g6. Uh, don't see a threat, so let's just bring the rook. Let's just bring the rook to e1. So, one minute 20 seconds. I should be even faster. That was the idea behind rook e1. Just rook lift closer to the king. Step by step. Another idea may be just to play rook f to e1. Exerting some pressure in that knight. Maybe there is no pressure anymore. Wait a second. What if I take on e5 with the rook and after queen h3 take on e8? Queen f5, rook takes a8. Yeah, this looks nice. Am I crazy? Or is it just correct? That looks correct. Rook e5. Tactics. Queen is handing on g4. So, okay, queen f4. This is a way to go. But in this case, we have a better set of pieces now, I guess. That's what I wanted to try here. Just to bring my rook to the game this way. Quickly. Another tactical shot. Now queen is trapped. Well, queen f5 is still playable, of course. That's the only move, but now I have a queen and 40 seconds on the clock. This is bad. But again, doable, so. Oh, super passive. Super passive. But anyway, so put the kid in the light square so that it's not being disturbed by the bishop. Attacking the rook now and b7 at the same time. Starting collecting pawns one by one. Tuck. One more. And one more. And one more. Yeah. Come on, man. This is bad. Tricky Andre says Zeal. Yeah, of course. But it's not only about tricks, right? So the strategy was correct right from the start. I believe that somewhere here, to avoid all these problems with that bishop on g7, although I don't know, maybe it's a part of the theory, but I believe it was better for uh, black to try this immediate capture, so keeping that knight on e5 for as long as it's possible, because it's really important piece, it controls a lot, it covers a lot, and if I take on e5, of course you're super happy, you have the center. This is perfect scenario for you. Um, and in this case, you play knight e4, you have some tricks, so like bishop g4 with the temple. Then you can at some point, <coughs> sorry, consider um, grabbing my bishop on d3 with the knight. And yes, you will have this problem with f5, but 
you'll have pair of bishops. So this deserved attention, I think. Um, so let's have a look at that moment where I played uh, rook captures e5. That was really interesting moment. So the idea was behind the idea which was behind is actually this rook takes c8. So queen is still hanging. Uh, now rook attacks rook. If queen takes f5, I take the rook and the bishop is hanging. But maybe it was something that black should have considered. So in this case, after all these exchanges, position has been uh, simplified. But according to my experience, it's if I can coordinate my rooks quickly and it looks like the case here, I guess the queen has no chances. Maybe I'm overestimating my position. Probably Black has some chances still just quickly attacking my pawns. But I think I can easily protect them, right? Something like that. Just rook e2. Then rook e1. Well, making some room for king. And then rooks just beat the queen. But it was worth trying because this line, I think it's clearly better for white. This knight is better than that bishop, in my opinion. Probably rook takes e3 was the last mistake. After that, I really quickly bring my rook to the game and now it feels like feels like a winning position for what well very close to at least have no idea the engine will probably say that it's equal have no idea Olaf is the next except Question, so are you a fan of two rooks in the endgame against the queen? I'm not a fan of pieces <laughs> to start with, but uh, according to my experience, rooks are, in the vast majority of cases, if there are no terrible weaknesses, are better than the queen long term. Well, for a quick reference, just look at uh, the game between Kromnik and Leko from their world championship uh, in one of the games Leko just gradually outplayed Kramnik with two rooks no problems whatsoever and, and that's a model by the way for playing that type of ending knight on d2 what's going on here let's just deal with that bishop first The Fuxi again says, absolutely correct thing. So two rooks can attack a pawn twice, a queen can defend it only once. Correct. That's how, for example, three against three uh, on one flank and games with two rooks against the queen are being converted. So you just attack one pawn, then the queen and the king protect it, and then you just sacrifice two rooks for a queen and a pawn and win the king and pawn ending with extra pawn. Simple yet efficient. Okay. So I'm actually offering white to, to grab the center. Why it's not happening? Why there is no e4 still? Okay, here it comes. So we're a bit passive here. And the fact we're having two bishops doesn't really play a significant role here because position is closed for now. Uh, but the fact I have a dark script bishop and my opponent doesn't gives me a chance to grab the control over dark squares in the long run, of course. Wow, this is too much, I think. Maybe not. What about this now? Well, Prom Knight, just look at that game between Kramnik and Leko, you will understand everything. How to deal with uh, this sort of material. So, of course, it, it all depends on your technique. But it's really important to develop this technique because in that case, you will not miss chances to get two rooks against the queen and easily win the game.
just an advice because uh, if you build this habit of thinking that uh, well queen is actually better than two rooks then you will definitely avoid lots of interesting lines missing chances actually that's the thing that's what i'm talking about all right all right all right back to this game my bishop is just super bad on b7 for now so we should somehow improve it and then see how for now maybe queen a5 was better move yeah bishop is terrible bishop is just terrible let's maneuver it to a better position somewhere maybe bishop c8 bishop d7 something like that all right i'm forced back well you actually can uh the problem is that you cannot easily practice techniques as problem right you can so if you have a sparring partner then it's super simple you're just playing with him concrete types of positions if you don't have just just try an engine you just put the position and train against the engine engine shows you the best way to play then you okay switch colors and play that way and then engine shows you another way and you gradually learn so it is possible indeed and practicing of course yeah real games but you never know what comes in the real game with the engine or with the partner you can actually yeah model the situation you can force certain types of material and that's exactly what you need still unclear but i think this a4 was not needed it's kind of a bit strange to me it looks like a target for my bishop now my stupid bishop finally has something to do in this game All right i don't care let's grab a pawn looks good so I moved my bishop from super passive position on b7 and even won a pawn. What a great transformation. I didn't expect this would happen. But it happened. So now, important thing is not to be checkmated, right? White is probably going to play something like e5. I'm not against e5. Just want to cover my weaknesses here. Now what? Mm. This is getting a bit tricky. So this e5 is definitely a good move, probably the best chance for white. Let's see, rook b1, rook b1, takes e5, takes e5, bishop takes e5, queen e4, queen f5. Is it good for me or not? I have no idea. Uh, queen takes f4, queen g6, or queen e6 even. It's uh, bad. Hmm. Not so clear to me what to do here. I want to get rid of this queen. Let's try it. Only 54 seconds on the clock. This is risky. Risky thing. Ah. Smart choice. Aha, uh -huh. I can see it now. I didn't see it before. I could have done it one move ago. Now I see these tactics. I hope it works. Suck. <laughs> Tricky stuff. Deflecting the bishop from uh, protecting the knight on f1. So, of course, d takes c5 immediately. 
I've seen that there was a problem with the back rank, but I didn't see this bishop c2 resource. Fortunately, I've noticed it right after I played, right after my opponent played queen g5. Yeah. And what's important here, bishop controls the long diagonal, so there are no intermediate things like queen g6, bishop g6, nothing actually. So just wins on the spot. All right. Okay. So after this move, if bishop takes, I take on e5 immediately, right? Or even take on f4, no, take on e5. And the same if f e5, then queen f1. This doesn't work, so rook b1, rook b1. Yeah, and now I should have tried this d takes c5 because it works the same way here, I guess. It's bishop c2 and it's over. Okay, so <clears throat> what I think was uh, played uh, incorrectly, this a4, I'm not sure it's a good idea. <clears throat> so instead, um, I think... Well, I don't know, maybe bring the knight to a5. No, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. So yeah, it should be should be more or less equal position. But okay, I don't have an immediate advice here. So something like e5, of course, should be checked here. d takes e5, knight e4, some stuff like that. Maybe this works, by the way. So what about this? e5 takes knight e4 with the idea of d6. But what's important, knight takes f6. Probably it's just too much, right? But at least my pawn structure sucks here. But probably I can get away with this. Maybe not. I, I don't know. It's really, really hard to say what is the best plan. The th thing is, I'm just controlling dark squares here, right? So you cannot really proceed with your pawns here. Because e5 is controlled almost always. The only problem for me is this bishop b7, but as you can see, well, step by step it can be solved. So I would have avoided just uh, giving up a bishop this way so easily, because bishop is a bishop. Okay, uh, next one is uh, Yashak. Not sure if I pronounced it correctly, sorry for that. Uh, did we play? I think no. Yeah, it's the first game. Okay, playing with white. French. Uh, let's play the line from the childhood. Advanced variation or advanced system. I have no idea. Sveshnikov. Sveshnikov line. That's correct. Okay. Let's develop pieces. <clears throat> Could have taken on B3 actually. Also an option. Um, what to do now? Let me remember. There are some tricks based on this bishop takes c4. But I think it doesn't work now because d6 is controlled. Knights can potentially jump to c5, which may be very annoying. Mm -hmm. Let's just grab it. I know it's... It's bad. Should have done this without playing rook to b1 then. Just wanted to try this trick since we have, you know, an episode full of tricks. I was trying to, 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 to try this. Tr <laughs> I was trying to try the trick um, of taking on c4 at some point. Even with the knight on b3, sometimes it works. Yeah, d d didn't work this time. Knight to e7, all right, not even taking my knight, wow. This is a bit strange to me. Now I will protect it, all right? So instead of having a piece on b3, 
black will eventually have a pawn or maybe black will just give up a bishop you may say that all right it's a french bishop it's a bad piece but no it's not that bad it's passive but it's not bad it's very important as a defender uh so i'll just go away and i'll grab it with pleasure because now no one protects light squares so my plan of f4 f5 will just uh yeah deliver a win easily easily perfect position for white now perfect fortunately black did it so that i can demonstrate the power of controlling light squares now and i hope i will not blunder something like a stupid Morin, so that yeah, it will be a reality. This attack, this typical attack. Okay, now it's harder to implement, of course. Uh, what about just playing bishop a4? Check. Because if knight goes back to c6, I may consider something like b3 or b4 even. Okay. So black decided not to do that, which is good. Let's bring our bishop to a better position. So gradually, we should bring it somewhere to f6, ideally. But I forgot about my bishop on a4, yeah. <laughs> Now it's you know placed not not so not so good, uh, but nevertheless, yeah. I was too much focused on enjoying my position instead of actually playing it correctly. So now I have a problem. So my bishop is here, but the queen is also kind of stuck. So maybe it's fine after all. Yeah. It's no longer what I wanted to get. Okay. Let's maneuver. Oh, God damn it. This is very good. Thanks God I'm not losing here after this, but look, Rook on F1 is handy, so I cannot grab a pawn. Yeah, what to say? Black is probably better now. Yeah, I misplayed it completely. What an idiot. <coughs> Such a good position. What an idiot. All right, I have nothing better now. Okay, so once again, we can focus on the king side, more or less, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but it also has some play there. Before is coming, a takes before, then a3 takes b2 is it really dangerous i'm not sure but i need one rook to control this stuff here in that case it will be not dangerous so what can be my plan maybe to bring my king closer yeah if i have a king somewhere on d2 supporting supporting one of the rooks in defense of the c3 it's gonna be good all right all right so let's do it. Okay, the king is there. Now one of the rooks is free. So which one to bring and where? Or maybe my queen is free. And yeah, my queen shouldn't be here anymore. This doesn't look like that. 
Okay. No, it's not so simple. Okay, let's bring the rook here now. It still doesn't give me anything. So if I move my queen there, maybe b4. Let's take this risk. All right, no risk anymore. I didn't achieve anything actually. There is no breakthrough, right? So white is winning here. The thing is, uh, do I have enough time? Yeah, it's an easy win for white now. That was a crazy game. I mean, just like for, from the childhood. I mean, I've played a lot of the spawn structures, but Black made only one mistake actually at the very, very end. It was interesting for Black to try something like, uh, yeah, here, maybe something like before at this very moment. Because if I take with the pawn, there is rook c2, it's really bad. And with this, then a3, let's say takes, b2, king goes to c2, rook takes c3. I've seen this line. I, I didn't think black will get anything, but it was interesting to try, I mean, just to... But no, objectively speaking, white should be winning here, right? So, <clears throat> well, I don't know. Probably this g4 was bad. Instead of playing that, of course, I should have tried this, and then h3, and then g4, something like that, gradually, again. But to be honest, I just messed up everything at the beginning, so it was fantastic position. It was fantastic position here, and for some reason I started playing so stupid moves, this idea of bishop to a4, who cares about that? So, yeah. Maybe I should have just tried g4 and then f5. Why didn't I play that? I have no idea. It's just g4 right away and if h5 then just f5. Just breaking through light squares, exactly what I wanted to do, but I wanted to do that with comfort. That's why I was punished for it, because if you have a chance to do it right now, do it. So that's what white should play here. That is exactly what position requires. Just quick breakthrough light squares because black no longer has a light square bishop. All right. So prom knight says f5 instead of bishop e3. Let's have a look. Where was it after there? f5. Just e takes f5. I don't see anything here for white. Honestly. 
Maybe I'm just blind. Not e takes f5, I'm sorry. G takes f5, obviously, not to allow this e6. Check. Just bishop e7 or king c7. King c7, probably. Now, of course, white has compensation here, but I didn't see anything concrete. <coughs> and as I say, instead of doing that, just play g4 and f5. White is not even sacrificing anything here. So f takes g6 is threatening. If it takes, then it takes. And that's it. It's a winning position strategically. So this check is nothing. You just go king to h1. And then you, if black doesn't do anything, I just play f6. And this h5 and f7 will drop sooner or later. f7 drops, then everything drops here. e6, d5, c4, because it's the basis of the pawn chain. And black no longer has this bad French bishop to cover light squares, right? Okay. Yeah. Simple plan. I messed up completely. Uh, so yeah, instead of doing that, uh, instead of playing this, I think uh, black should just take the knight immediately here. So like this. So right after knight b3, just bishop takes b3. So if you want to implement this plan. So prom knight, you're probably missing something. So after f takes e5, g takes f5, queen h4 and king c7, there is no queen e7 move because bishop controls that square. If you mean this line with bishop e7, bishop g5, takes, takes, and then queen, yeah, then it works. But I will not play bishop e7, I will play king c7 immediately. But in this case, there is queen f6 though. Rook h7. Okay, even here I'm not sure that something is happening. Yeah, looks nice, but I don't see a follow-up. Looks like it's still playable for black. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's a good resource. Okay, so let's play one more game, I guess. And... I don't know whom to choose. Well, there is one guy I've never played before, so let's accept that one. Very strange nickname. Hard to pronounce, but anyway. Nope. No knight is c6 on the previous move, so probably now. Yep. Okay, this tricky line. Oh, f3 is quite passive. So now I think we will play d5. Bishop g5 is the main line instead of f3, and yeah, I think it looks good. I think it looks good for for white. Should be preferred to this uh, f3 move. Because f3 not only weakens diagonal a7, g1, it also grabs f3 square from queen, which is not so good. But maybe I misplayed it a bit. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know yet. So what's the right move here? C takes d5, knight e5. Bishop c5, check, goes away. Queen b2, knight c7 is bad for black. Um, but I don't really want to regain the pawn here. I want to exert some pressure in dark squares. Again, the same uh, simple idea. So. White no longer has a dark square bishop, which means dark squares are weak. So we have to exert some pressure on dark squares. We should search for dark squared weaknesses. That's how it works. Now queen takes b2, 
or queen d4 check queen d4 check followed by cd5 then c3 is annoying all right so what's the right move now it's not only four it's also not bad actually ah. I'll try a super risky thing, but I'm wondering if that works. I mean, if rook b1, then queen d4 check. And then I just need to protect my rook so that there is no c3. How to do that? Either rook b6 or maybe bishop somewhere, maybe to f5. I don't know. Why decided to capture on c6? Well, makes sense. Can I play this move? I know it looks stupid, but I just want to get rid of that knight. I hate it. It's really strong, just controlling so much. Without it on e4, I will feel myself much better. Uh, so, look, now I have space, really. For my pieces. Okay, and now my bishops uh, gradually get some targets. This is also a good sign. Could have captured on a3. Why didn't I do that? I don't know. Feels like I'm just ignoring material in this in this game. <laughs> I have no idea why. Material is important, actually. Yeah, let's improve. Let's just take it. Should have captured immediately. Morin. Uh, yeah, closer to, 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 to the end of the show, I started playing very strange chess. Well, all right. This position is already quite, quite good for me, I believe. Queen d2. So let's attack the queen. Let's attack it one more time. Gradually improving the position of the bishop, because an a3 was quite vulnerable. On d6, it's way better. And uh, now we can do what uh, queen e5 comes to my mind, just creating a sort of a checkmate. Already in a time trouble, but I think it's it's a manageable thing. Yeah, especially if white is missing the point behind queen e5 move. It's really simple. Okay, so dark squares and uh, yeah, we're weakened after this exchange and after f3, followed by exchange on f6. All the dark squared, all the dark squares were weakened, and well, no surprises that game was finished on the dark square h2, right? It's just a, a favorite tale. In fact, uh, the position was not so clear, and I was afraid of uh, rook to b1 move here. So queen to d4, then king to h1, and there is a sort of c3 right now because my rook is not protected. I was not sure what to do, because if I take on d5, let's say there is c3. And who knows? Who's playing for what here? Uh, so what I was planning to do against uh, this line uh, was either to develop my bishop to f5. That was one idea. But in that case, again, I, I don't know what I'm doing there. So on f5, bishop is just doing nothing, right? Uh, and gives white a tempo to grab on c6, let's say. Another idea was just to play rook b6, in which case, again, why can't just take on c6, and I cannot really, uh, you know, take on c6 because of bishop b5. So unclear position. Probably, yeah, black is doing okay here, tactically, for now. And long term, again, all the white is a pawn up. There will be a problem with all of the pawns, right? So I'm not recommending this position for white. But again, taking into account that I don't see tactical uh, refutation of what black is doing here. If there is some sort of tactical refutation, then of course black's position sucks and everything is fine for white. I'm just uh, looking at this from pure positional point of view, taking into account some dynamics, of course, but uh, yeah, in general, I don't know, maybe there is something like C3 right now, which will change the uh evaluation of this position i have no idea 
but probably it was worth doing because uh, what White has done. Yeah, this position is already looking quite good for Black, I guess. Probably even close to winning because White's pieces are passive. My bishops are great. Uh, you have weaknesses all around the board. Hard to play at least. Okay, so thanks a lot for being with me. Uh, I hope from a technical point of view, this episode was way better than the previous one. Um, and I hope that you managed to learn something from my games this time. Um, I have a feeling that I won all of the games, but not all of them were easy to play. Thanks for that. Thanks for challenging me each and every time. And uh, yeah, all the best guys. Uh, see you this coming Thursday, if nothing bad happens, with another episode of the Bonter Blitz. Bye-bye.